What happens when carb loading goes completely wrong? Hopefully, you never need to know. But really, carb loading isn't some kind of magic trick. By now, you hopefully understand how important carb loading can be in a bodybuilding show. It gives you a massive advantage. This is because a bodybuilder can maintain a fuller and larger physique than they might actually have due to carbohydrates in their body. This is due to intramuscular glycogen, things you've definitely heard of before. But carbohydrates can also increase blood volume, which is super favorable for that kind of nasty, grainy look that bodybuilders seem to love. Carb loading and peak week at large always goes wrong. And I say always because, let's be honest, the amount of times we see this happen at every single show is crazy. You would think after several decades of doing bodybuilding that people would have carb loading down to a science. But unfortunately, they don't. But I think I have something you might enjoy. You see, estrogen is something that isn't really spoken about in relation to carb loading. In fact, estrogen's effects in bodybuilding are highly contested. It seems like estrogen studies just get thrown out the window, but when there's a study on a rat taking D-ball, everyone's reading with their glasses on. You see, estrogen has a ton of positive exertion on glucose metabolism when in physiological range, and I must state that again in physiological range, not a surplus, not a hypoestrogenic state, in range. And this might just be the reason that you clicked on this video. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all trying to improve a peak week, and I think this video will help you do that. And if you could help me out by clicking subscribe and maybe even hitting the bell button, that would be super, super appreciated. Not as super compensated as your physique's about to be with adequate estrogen, and I'm gonna explain exactly why that is. They're on to me, dude. Those guys are sharp as nails up there. You can't put anything past them. Oh my God, dude, I'm freaking out. I am so stressed out. I feel like I'm having a panic attack. You wanna talk about stress? You wanna talk about stress? Okay? I've stumbled onto a major company conspiracy, Mac. How about that for stress? You see, estrogen helps us loading glycogen. It actually helps improve glucose's conversion or synthesis into glycogen, which is what is residing in our muscles stored up as sort of energy that we can call upon when our body's metabolism needs it to fire muscles or do other things. But what does this all really mean? I mean, some of us are new here, so I wanna make sure I cover it top down. Glucose is a type of sugar that we eat. It's in most starchy carbohydrates, your rices, your breads, things of this nature. Essentially, it's a critical energy source for our body. After you eat it, glucose goes into your blood Blood, where it circulates around your body and again is stored until needed later. When your body stores glucose, it converts it into glycogen. And this is basically just a storage form of glucose. The conversion process happens by simply having blood glucose, then insulin helps that blood glucose enter a cell, ideally a muscle cell, and then that muscle cell through a couple of enzymes converts that glucose into glycogen, resulting in a much fuller muscle. When you exercise or just have a lack of energy intake, your muscle then depletes that glycogen to reuse it as glucose in the blood and then therefore as energy for your body to perform. And the reason that having a good amount of glycogen in your muscle is going to make the muscle bigger is it's a highly hydrophilic molecule. It will create a situation where about one gram of glycogen is going to bring with it three to possibly four grams of water. And if you're loading 800 grams of glycogen into a muscle, well, that's a hell of a lot of water as well. And again, this is the muscle, all intracellular space, creating a big, big change in cross-sectional area within someone's physique. But why is estrogen important? in all of this. Well, estrogen actually increases glucose uptake into skeletal muscle. Of course, it does this with regional adipose tissue as well, meaning fat tissue, mainly muscle here. We're talking about estrogen being able to increase the translocation of glucose transporter type 4, GLUT4. You probably have heard about this before. This GLUT4 goes to the top of the cell. It opens up like a sewage drain opening on a very, very wet New York street. As soon as it opens up, all the water floods into the sewage port and gets inside the sewage system. And the sewage system, in this case, is our nasty ass physique. Estrogen also suppresses gluconeogenesis within the liver. It does this by downregulating key gluconeogenic enzymes that will create gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis. So let's have some fun pronouncing words, because this is the thing that I suck at the most. It's funny when you read a ton of data, you don't really learn how to pronounce things, because you've just read it your whole life. And then when you have to actually say the words, you're like, so we're going to do that. All right, here we go. Phosphonepyruvate carboxykinase 
or PEPCK and glucose 6 phosphate phosphatase G6 face in short words you'll be happy that you honestly have no reason to know these are the guys that estrogen inhibits therefore inhibiting gluconeogenesis or what would be the depletion of glucose from the liver estrogen independently also improves insulin sensitivity before I was talking about how insulin gets the glucose from the blood and puts it into the muscle well estrogen is independently making that insulin molecule more able to target a muscle cell and therefore bring that glucose into that specific cell. It does this by modifying a couple different insulin pathways, specifically insulin receptor substrate one. And the last one is PI3K. This one I will try to pronounce for you right now. I've never had to say this out loud before. Phosphoenocetide three kinase. That wasn't so bad. Again, these are ultimately words you can literally dump out of your head because if you just say them, you'd seem as a smart asshole, but no one really gives a shit to listen to you. And lastly, one of my personal favorite things about estrogen and keeping it relatively higher within range, it's its ability to enhance mitochondrial function and thereby improving energy metabolism. This is obviously good for performance-based sports. As a side note, really, really important. I mean, like if I have a strongman competing and he has, let's say, a show in three weeks, we're doing everything we can to get that estradiol as high as we can. Honestly, it's pretty cool stuff because there's methyl estradiol as well, so we can leverage things like b-ball, which you don't really get to use as a bodybuilder because it doesn't really have a place. Anyway, so now that you know meaningless words that 95% of the population will never even care about you saying, what should you do to maximize your carb load and show up on the show day looking dialed in? Well, like most things in bodybuilding, and you hear me say this a lot, folks, it depends on a lot of different conditions. What you should do depends entirely on who you are as a physique. And I think this is why a lot of people miss their peaks because they just tried to copy and paste the same blueprint that someone did on a client three years ago and it's worked for a couple of people. Do you lean out quickly and are you on the flatter side? Or do you struggle to get dry and lean when you're in a diet? Well, if the latter explains you more, then what you really might need to do is nothing that you just heard in this video. You might actually have to suppress estrogen to get a physique that's representable on stage. Because ultimately, I do believe that inhibiting estrogen does improve fat loss outcomes and can make a person's physique drier. Even though at a molecular level, we can't really explain why this is, it does seem to happen in shade trades. What's the f word I'm looking for? It's in shade trades? charades it's spades it seems to happen in spades however if you're on the flatter side like myself i do suggest that you allow estrogen to climb a little bit in a peak week or in a prep and i'm not saying get it radically high again what i'm talking about is within range many competitors take drugs that will just automatically put their estradiols in the gutter all i'm suggesting is that you pull it out of the gutter a little bit at least keep your estradiol within or above single digits, ideally in double digits. And you can test this by doing LCMS testing, ideally, because that's ultra sensitive assays are gonna basically let you know what's actually happening as opposed to what other drugs might be interfering with the falsified estradiol that you're getting on blood work. But I generally, generally, very general, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly what I've heard, allegedly, is that if you keep your estrogen around 20 picograms per milliliter, you're on the nuts, buddy. Now, of course, this does present an immediate issue for you. You are likely going to need to get lab work pulled about three weeks out from the show. It's actually something I'm a huge fan of because ultimately it's when you get to see really when you're in the weeds as a physique competitor with compounds and training and dietary restrictions, what's going on inside. What you're also gonna need is likely faster acting compounds. I'm talking propionates and literally acetates. If you need those quick and sudden manipulations within pharmacology and specifically endocrinology, it's gonna be a necessary thing to have those shorter acting compounds. The bros had this right a while back. But both of these are more than likely things that the average gym bro and some guy just walking onto a bodybuilding stage thinking he become a professional athlete without ever having tried really hard for anything tend to care about. It will make a difference in the end and if you plan on having a long bodybuilding career with many many different shows under your belt, getting this data can be absolutely critical for you to succeed in every single show you do. And this group I'm talking about of people who could care less certainly isn't you people, right? 
right? Right? Okay, just to wrap this up in a nice little tight bow tie. I don't think anyone should even care about this stuff if they're not ultimately lean, lean, lean. And I don't think anyone should care about this stuff if they have a coach already. Listen to what your coach is saying because if you just veer off course from that, it will fuck everything up more often than not. But the video I'm making is for people who are their own coaches or who coach other athletes. You're too caught up in your own little peak week mind to make these kind of decisions. And trust me, you don't want to be making these kind of decisions in a peak week. You are going to second guess absolutely everything. This is for the kind of person who has data on themselves and who has planned their peak week far beyond two weeks before the show or even just a few days before the peak week begins. Well, that's about it. Thanks.